Hey there, welcome back. This is part 15 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. To check out my previous videos in this series, make sure to click on the card above or click on the link in the description below. So in this video, we will learn how we can generate reports using a layer reporting tool. So far when we are running a test, we see this kind of report, which is called the spec reporter. But now we'll switch this up with our earlier reports. So let's take a look on how we can get this installed. So let me head over to Chrome. Okay, so I'm in the LEO Reporter WebDriver IO documentation. So what we need to do first is install a LEO Reporter npm package. So we can do that by doing npm install and running this command over here basically. Let me head back to VS Code. And then I'm just gonna paste this here and hit enter. So our package is installed. Now let's take a look at what we need to do next. So if you see now they're configuring their uh, reporter. So by adding in the alert here and then also passing in output directory where it needs to basically print out the reports. So let's do that. I'm going to head over to VS Code. Going to minimize this. And I'm going to search for report to reporter. And if you see this by default, it has spec. This is what we were running so far. I'm gonna replace this and add a layer here. And then I'm gonna add this in a bracket. So. And we will pass in our output directory. So that would be, let's call it a layer results. Okay. So we added our reporter, uh, which is a layer and then we add in the path of where it needs to print out the reports. Okay, so this is done. Now let's take a look what we need to do next. Okay, scroll down. All right, so let's ignore this for now. Um, and now what they're saying is we can display the report by doing alert generate and then running this command basically. But before we do that, we need to install the alert command line too. So let's do that first. I'm going to open this in a new tab. Okay, to install a layer command line, we have to do npm install dash g and a layer command line. So let's install this. I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so that's installed. And now we can generate our reports by just running that command. So I'm going to head back. Right, so what they're doing is they're using the earlier command line and then doing generate and putting the output directory, which in our case, we selected um, earlier results, which was this. So we're going to do the same thing there. And then we're going to do earlier open to actually open the file. So let's do that. I'm going to head back. So before we run that command to display the results, we need to run our test. So I'm going to run a test. Okay, and then hit enter. Let's make sure which file I'm running first. Okay, so I'm running the search.js, that's okay. So let me run this. Okay, so our test ran successfully and they passed. Okay, good. So if you notice this time we're not seeing the spec reporter. Instead, we have this new folder created here called earlier results. This is the same that we provided in our reporter path over here. So the same thing got generated in this new folder. If I open this, all this is basically a bunch of JSON files, which includes all our results. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. And what we need to do now is generate our reports. So this is just the results of our test. We need to use this results to generate the LR report. And we downloaded the or well, we install the earlier reporting command line tool. So we're going to use that. So I'm going to do earlier and do generate, pass in the path, which is our earlier results. And then I'm going to do earlier open. So what this line will do here is generate a report. So you're going to see a new folder created called earlier dash reporter or report. And then we're going to open that report using earlier open command. So I'm going to hit enter. Okay, so if you notice here, it opened up a new browser window for us. And over here, uh, we have our earlier report. 
So there's few things to notice. We have our eight test cases that we ran. So this was basically four test cases, but we ran it in two browsers. So that's why eight test cases, all of them passed 100%. And we can see the eBay product search suite that we ran. If I click on that, you can see all the test cases over here. So the, the reason it's duplicated is because one we have for Chrome and then one for Firefox. And if I click on that, you can see more details over here. And then there's also this categories, which we're not seeing anything at the moment. Um, you can go click on the graphs here to see more detail. So this will tell you the status of your number of failed, broken or passed tests, as well as you can see the severity of your test and the duration of how long the test ran. And then you have a bunch of other options too, which you can just cl uh, click around and try to figure out what they do. Okay. So I'm going to head back to VS Code. And if you notice, we have a new folder created, which is our earlier report. And if I open that, we have a bunch of new folders inside that, which is basically what we're seeing in our browser. Okay, so I'm gonna stop our server that started, which is the earlier server. And then what we will do is, uh, let me go back to Chrome and go to reporter. Okay, so Besides from just running that uh, reporting over here, we can do a lot more with Alia Reporter. So if we go here, we can see, well, actually not here, let me scroll up. So there's a bunch of API that it supports. So we can add a new label, we can add features for our test, we can add a story or severity. This is the item that we were looking over here. So let's try to do a couple of these and see how it shows in our Alia report. So what I'm gonna do is start off with first, um, let's say this feature. So we'll add a feature to our test. So let's do that. We can do that by doing add feature and they have an example over here. So we need to import, since we're using ES6, we'll import this um, line and then we will pass in the feature like this. Let's do that. Let's go to, so I'm gonna go to our search test. And then over here, just paste in our earlier reporter. And let's add in a feature somewhere over here. Let's see, this would work. So we can do earlier reporter dot add feature and then just name our feature. So we can call this search category feature, for example. I'll save this. And at the same time, let's also add in a severity for one of our tests. So I'm gonna copy this. And for example, we think this text, uh, this test is important or uh, it has a high severity. So we can just add in there. I will do add severity and I will make this one critical. So I think they have critical, low, medium, high. So you can just set critical here. Okay, so I'm gonna run the test again and then we're gonna generate a report once again. So let me run the test. Okay, so a test run and they passed again. Yep, good. So what I'm gonna do now is we will generate a report again. So I'll do alert generate, same thing. And if I hit enter, you will see that it will throw an error. So basically what it's saying is that we already have a folder called alert report. So what we need to do is first clean this folder. So delete this. Either you can just do right click and delete or you can pass in dash dash clean command. So we will do the other way, which is the providing dash dash clean command here. Okay, and then I'll hit enter. So if you notice it deleted the folder there and then it will generate again. There you go. Right, and it opened up a new uh, window. So I'm gonna close the old one. And this time, if you see here, we have a new category. So which is the search category that we added. I can click on that and see that it shows up here. So this way you can add different categories for your test. Um, they also have something called stories, I believe. So, uh, yep, add story. So let's yeah, say each user story that you have for your test, you can add in there. So this way it would be a nice way to categorize them. Uh, this is totally optional, you don't need to do this. And if I go to our crafts again, this time, if you notice, we have a critical test, which is over here, and then we have a normal test. So this way you can add in different um, severity for your test, either critical, blocker, minor, or whatever. So it's just something for the reporting purposes. If a test fails and you know it's a critical test, then you probably should be looking into it. Or if it's a blocker, that's, you should probably pay focus on that. And if it's, let's say, uh, not really a important test, then you can probably crack, depending on how you want to do it in your own company. Okay, so let me head back to VS Code. 
all right so what we'll do is just one more thing um if i just let's see go to watch this test and let's try to fail our test just to see how that would look like so we have this banner title where we are verifying the um, title here so i'll just change this to i don't know maybe shoes so we don't we know that there is no text that contains shoes there so this test will fail and we'll run the test to see how it will show in the earlier report so i'm going to run this and i'll speed this up okay so our test ran and as expected they failed and okay so we see here we were expecting shoes instead we got this which is fine on purpose we failed it so i'm gonna run our report notice to do dash dash clean to delete the previous folder and then it will open up a new browser window again there you go okay so this time if you see we have our test running and then we have this two test failing perfect so we have our watches page and we have our previous product search page and if you see here in the categories we see the product defects if i click on that then we can see the test failing if i come here it says expected shoes and instead it received this one so which is fine that's what we were expecting but in general you get the idea now that for test fail this is how it will look like um, same thing in your graph you can see it here it shows up in red so that means you know this test failed all right so i think now that you know the basics of a layer i'm going to leave you guys to play around with different layer functionality and implement them in your test so in our next video we will learn to take screenshot when a test fails and attach them in our earlier reports all right guys if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and also make sure to subscribe to my channel to see more content like this that's it for this video folks i will see you in the next one